maso Jagala uchenga diyo muku baloti Hey Ndi muku mundi no musinji Okusoma anti kwa musinji Is the key to the future Everywhere I go Let's go to school So we never retire I'll never look my back Pick up your shoes Pull up your socks and go Let's go to school Wow, that's a very nice song, Marianne. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like it too. Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me clearly. Hi. Hi, we can hear you. Hi, great. Welcome, everyone. And we're going to start the meeting now. I see a lot of familiar names. You're all most welcome. I hope even more people join as they... Uh, see the message that it started. So welcome everybody. We are here for our second follow-up meeting in two weeks time to listen and learn from teachers and the classroom experiences. So um, I'll just do a quick introduction of what this meeting is all about and what this project is all about. And then I'll pass it over to my colleagues, Nelly from Kenya and John from Sierra Leone. They're going to be leading the meeting today. So um, everyone, welcome to the GPE Kicks Africa 19 Hub project. Uh, this is a community of practice. It's a professional learning group of people, mostly from ministries, governments, but also from affiliate organizations and civil society organizations who are gathered here to learn together about education topics. Um, Okay, so we'll do a quick agenda for what this meeting will be doing today. Uh, after my introduction, then Nelly will introduce the topic of today's meeting and the objectives. And then John will introduce the teachers who will be presenting. Then we will hear from five teachers and then Nelly will lead us in a reflective discussion. And then we'll end with some important next steps about what we are doing next in this community of practice. Here's a bit of background about the project. KIX or KIX stands for Knowledge Innovation Exchange. This is a platform for partner countries to share their knowledge, their innovations, and their good policies and practices with each other. So it's about country to country knowledge sharing about what works in education. What are the things that are working out well? And maybe what's not working out so well? What are the challenges that we have? How can we improve our education sector? It's all about sharing ideas from country to country. These are the countries in the hub. As you can see, there are a lot of them. They are congregated mostly in Eastern, Southern, and Western Africa. And if you are here today, it's because your country is a member of the Kicks Africa 19 hub. So as I said, this is a professional learning community. It's a community of practice. Uh, and the topic of the overall topic of study is competency-based education and curricula. So CBE and CBC, and how it is being implemented in basic education systems. And everyone who's here has opted into this professional group, this community of practice. They want to learn more about CBC, and their country may either be implementing CBC, or there may be data on uh, uh, already years of data on how it's been implemented, or maybe the country wants to implement it or wants to strengthen the implementation of it. So that's the beauty of this KICS project, Knowledge Innovation Exchange. The KICS project is that everybody comes in, just like in a classroom, everyone comes in with a different uh, 
prior knowledge and different prior experiences. And the whole idea, just like in a classroom, is that the teacher or the facilitator or uh, the managers, whoever is leading that discussion, draws out the knowledge from the learners, from all the people that come into the learning space. And everyone is at a different level and comes in with something different. And so that's why the, the diversity in this group is so celebrated. We have had up to 14 different countries taking part in these, this community, these discussions. Now, as we uh, move forward through today's meeting, I'd like us to think about something that Nima, one of the teachers uh, who presented last time, asked us. Nima is a teacher uh, from Tanzania who made us think about uh, this important question about how will competency-based curricula, CBC, move beyond the fate of other general education trends? Nima has made us think and ponder, is CBC just another trend? Is CBC some type of a fad that's going to come and go and go to the graveyard of education reforms that don't really work? Or is CBC something that should last, that's here to stay? Is there enough value in CBC that countries should adopt it and continue to improve it? That's why we're here today to, to talk about this. And we have teachers to tell us more about this. So uh, I'm going to pass it over to Nellie and John, our facilitators for today, as they take us through these important discussions. Nellie, over to you. Thank you so much, Miriam, for that uh, uh, brief overview of the meeting today and where we have come from and the purpose of our community of practice meetings. Uh, so I hope everyone is well and thank you for uh, uh, availing yourself for this meeting. I just want to pinpoint that this is a continuation of the last meeting that we had. We had teachers the other time as Marianne has pinpointed and therefore today again we have another meeting with the teachers so that they can continue sharing their experiences. We had Cleopas and Rachel who could not share last time but today they are here together with the other teachers that have joined us the way uh, Marianne has put it. So our today's objectives are three. One of them is to listen to, uh, to the teachers and learn from them how they implement the competency-based curriculum in terms of uh, curriculum uh, design or syllabus interpretation, how they design the activities to make sure learners are able to develop the requisite kind of core competencies. They are able to uh, um, nurture the values. They are able to address some of the challenges that learners may be grappled with in everyday life. So we want to hear from them how they design those kind of experiences in terms of assessment, how they do their assessment. Remember, for CBC, we talk about the formative assessment and the summative assessment. So we want to hear the kind of learning experience from our teachers. Other than that, we're also going to hear from them about learning resources. How are they able to come up with resources to facilitate the learning so that within their context, how are they able to do this so that uh, learning can also be very interesting and also hands-on to be able to develop the requisite competences that are, are, are necessary. So that will be among other topics that are going to hear from the, uh, from the teachers. Then from there, we are also going uh, to consider the kind of unique role, power and responsibilities of teachers in the development and implementation of CBC. Remember, the teachers are the ones on the ground and are implementing this kind of a curriculum. So we want to see their unique role, creativity, innovati innovativeness, how they do it in order to make sure that they're able to implement CBC in their various areas and then in, 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 their, in their various contexts. Then apart from that, we are also going to be able to identify successes and challenges in the implementation of CBC at the classroom level. Let's hear from the teachers how they and how they are how they have encountered these challenges, how different they are and how they have also tried as much as they can within their capacities to be able to counter or to overcome or to address these kind of challenges. So uh, I don't want to take uh, much time, but I want to take this over to John to introduce the teachers so that we can start the presentations. Welcome, John. Hello, John. Nelly, hello. Yes. Yes, yes, please go on. Yeah, yeah, no, yes. I'm very sorry, but the computer has stopped. Now then I'm using my phone and uh, I don't have access to their, 
their the profile. profile. Now. I don't know if you can do that for me. Now I'm oh. using my phone, the computer could not connect at all. Okay. And I'm not in the office, I'm uh, out one of the provinces in the country. So Okay, I can I can introduce the first teacher for you. Okay. Um the first teacher is uh, Rachel Wangare. I hope that is uh, okay, Marianne. Yeah. Yeah, the first teacher is Rachel Wangare Ndaze, who is a senior Kenyan teacher in charge of special education. She teaches uh, all subjects at the intermediate level at Kabete uh, VAT lab, that is the special needs education primary school in Nairobi County here in Kenya. So the first presenter will be Rachel Wangare. I hope she's in the meeting right now. And each teacher is presenting for eight minutes, John. Well, eight minutes, eight minutes. Yes. Okay. All right. So Rachel, are you there? Are you there? Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon. This is afternoon to our at our place. Okay. Okay. My my presentation is my teaching experience of competency based curriculum that is CBC, presented by Rachel Agari Dave Kabete Ve Club SNE Primary School, Nairobi County, Kenya. Next, next. What I like about teaching competency-based curriculum is that a CBC focuses on competencies and it's learner-centered. It gives fulfillment when the learner with intellectual disability acquires new skills and new knowledge, skills and attitude as they promote independent living. It enables me to move at the speed of the individual learner's strength as I research more on how to deal with their weaknesses. That is according to the uh, individual education program that we use for the learners with uh, intellectual disabilities. It's very motivating as I learn how to address the learning outcomes by sourcing for the appropriate learning experiences to meet the unique needs of the individual learners. Uh, learners with intellectual disabilities do not have the, the standard or the average knowledge, or each and every learner has his or her unique ability. So they are very diverse. You can't uh, 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 plan uh, uh, one document for all of them. And CBC, uh, in CBC, I use uh, use of ICT on learning experiences increases my scope of knowledge and skills because there are things I didn't know how to do, but because of use of IC, I, ICT, I'm now uh, having uh, a wider knowledge and what I thought I could not do or what I found very well done by other people and I could ask how they have done, today I can do it. It creates opportunities for solving our problems within the class from the immediate environment. It breaks the norms of it's not possible for the learners with intellectual disabilities. Uh, linking of one learning area to another creates a lot of creativity and inspiration. CBC, uh, I love CBC because integration of core values makes management of learners with intellectual di in, uh, disabilities in class and in the school compound very easy. Uh, integration of core competencies motivates my learners when carrying out new skills. Uh, one thing you have to know is that CBC move, goes a long way with CBA, that is curriculum-based assessment. And it brings equity to our learners with intellectual disabilities who have been neglected, who had been neglected in the past. 
now they are on board. They are equal with the other learners. And this motivates my learners to come to school because they do not want to miss school and miss the, the skills that will be taught because they know at the end of the course or at the end of the learning level, they will have an assessment to be done. Even at the end of every strand or even at the end of every sub, uh, substrand, they have an assessment rubric that will assess them. It, uh, and, and this motivates my runners. They wouldn't like to miss school. Go to the next slide, Marianne. Uh, learners' inspirational moments is when they, they have learned a new uh, skill through use of ICT. Uh, they'll come very early to class, even before the time, and they'll get the resources from the, the uh, wherever we keep them, and they start practicing even when I'm not there. When they have been, uh, another inspirational moment is when they have been given an, uh, an opportunity to explore in their environment like now you are from the picture you can see uh, that uh, that boy uh, is is drawing a camel uh, you can see that there is that uh, jigsaw puzzle of a camel it is dismantled and then you request the learner to assemble and you can see there is the numbers and ordering uh, Putting the number in order is a skill. Drawing is also another skill. You can see at the uh, and at the end of it all, the learner has drawn and has colored and is now uh, displaying the camel to the others. And you can see it's a lovely uh, camel. So that opportunity gives them the inspiration. Uh, the, the other inspirational moment is when they are they are they. They are they source for a solution to their problem. Yeah? They, they themselves, they source the, the solution for a problem that they have among us themselves, all as an individual. Kindly move on to the next slide. Another inspirational moment is when uh, is when they have known that is they have the knowledge they have the skill and then now they they you tell them they have done well that one it gives them the drive so you can see like now in uh, 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 in those picture there is that girl the picture number one the girl has known how to draw the color she doesn't know anything else she can draw the color and you can see the color of a color there is the color of an apple and the, the girl number two has, uh, has drawn a tomato. Even if she doesn't know how to, uh, she is not able to speak, she has drawn a, a, a tomato. Uh, with the boy number, the, 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 the learner number three, you can see she, uh, he has done so many things and there is some lighting, although not, not, not very clear. He is able to join three letter words and say this is a big uh, a big dog and uh, the other one this is a potato that's an achievement to the learners with intellectual disability the other one does not know how to write very much but the learner knows how uh, to say this is a camel and he has copied the word camel and uh, from the other picture you can see they have really done very well they have beats you can see they have bangles and they have done for themselves and you can see as they they display all uh, they are very happy learners irrespective of the fact that they have intellectual disabilities kindly move on uh, they 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 also they, they also like it when they they link a new learning area to another uh, to a new learning area like now you see the mark number one that learner does not know how to draw either horizontal or vertical lines but when you give them the material to do like this they are able to make lines and now you see this is you are combining a skill the, the there is the the knowledge of how to to carry out the skill of putting the lines together 
Eh? The, the fine motor is not well developed for that runner, but you can see there is something she has done, even if the books will not portray uh, that ability. Uh, now go to the second picture. You can see that the learner is trying to write our home, although it's not complete, our home. And you can see that they are transferring the skill of shapes into the, the craft work they are doing. The, the diagram number three is reflecting the different uh, shapes, use different use of lines, and also the, the picture number four. And that is very motivating. And they will do it and they will even tell their parents to buy them the material so that they can carry on. Kindly move on. So challenges that we face, I face when teaching CBC is lack of parental support. In fact, in this area, they, it's a slum like our parents are poor, so they need to be supported. Then the school have shortage of funds and I personally, I cannot afford to be buying the internet on a daily basis. And then the un unreliable internet connections. Okay. My learning experiences are developed from the specific learning outcomes that are there in the design. They are also developed from the core competences that I want the learners to acquire. And I also develop my learning experiences from methodologies that I want to be to, 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 to be to use, and even from the skills that I want the learners to acquire and even how I want to evaluate my learners and the resources I'm to use and how I want the learners to interact with the others during the learning process and the ICT, uh, how, how I am to integrate the, uh, the ICT in the learning process. Next. A formative assessment in CBC is carried out during, uh, during the learning process using the assessment at, at the end of every uh, substrat. And I also use the school-based assessment through and the methods that are used are observational checklist, oral question, letting scales, and portfolio. Those are the most the most that I use in class. And I gather CBC teaching aids and resources by sourcing them from the local environment. I ask them to bring some from home. The I also the school also buys like you can, if you remember the pictures that I've shown. Those things are bought by the school. And then integration of technology into CBC, CBC lesson. We do it, I normally do it at the beginning of every suggested learning activity. So after we have seen whatever skill we, we are to carry out, I, I then make sure that I'm strong according to the learner's ability at every stage of the process so that the learner can understand how it goes. Then the support by the school leaders, we, I get support from my uh, school administration. The government is also su supportive and I also get support from well wishers. Next slide. Thank you for listening. Thank you. thank you for thank you so much <laughs> yeah so uh we i don't know if we have we have to, we have to wait until we we are lot we answer the questions or can we after the presentation we ask questions so uh, uh john rachel uh, yes let's sorry to interrupt you um uh, uh, rachel has to go soon so if okay. she maybe if there are any questions she could answer them now and then we can move okay. on to Cleopas. Okay. So uh, so uh, if anyone with a question now you can ask the question as uh, Maya has already said that um, Rachel will leave us very soon. So uh, if you have a question you can uh, reach up your hands and show that we can uh, yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm Maria, I'm seeing your hand up. Is it uh, Maria? I'm seeing your hand up. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. No, John, my hand's not up, but there is a okay. question in the chat box. Mm -hmm. Okay. There is a chat box there. One has asked what do you what do you include in your checklist when assessing students? Yes, what that is the question. What do you include in your checklist when assessing students? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is the question for Richard. Yes. Okay, just after that, Fatu will uh, answer up. Okay, okay, Fatu, go ahead. Fatu, she say, Jesse, go ahead. And after uh, Richard, we answer the questions together. So, okay. Fatu, go ahead okay. and answer. Yeah. Okay, good afternoon. This is Fatu from the Gambia. Okay. Uh, Richard, thank you for the presentation. It's very interesting. Um, uh, you mentioned different uh, methods that you use in assessing the, stu the, the students. So uh, which of these uh, methods do you think is the most um, effective one in assessing competency base? Because you use observation, uh, scale rating, um, oral questions and the like. So which of them do you, uh, do you observe to be the most effective um, um, method of assessing uh, Okay, I think that's a, that's the question. Or oh, somebody also with Techno Mobile. Who is it? Can you give your name? Techno. Uh, I'm always in Techno. Tell us your name. No, no, just that. He's muted. The one with the Techno Mobile, please unmute so that you can contribute. Yeah, unmute. The one with the Techno Mobile, unmute, and then you can ask your question. All right, good. I think you can go on. Okay, okay, move, move, Mpo, you can ask. Mpo, you can ask. On, yes. yes, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Yes, I have a question. Thank you for the good uh, presentation. Um, my yes. question is, uh, the presentation was kind of based on the yeah, learners with special yeah. needs. Yeah, so my question okay, is, yeah. what are the challenges okay, or the okay. successes on the ones who do not have special needs? Because uh, her presentation was more based uh, on the ones with special needs. So what about the ones who do not have a problem? How, how is this working? Uh, uh, how, how is she addressing this with the ones who do not have uh, uh, special needs. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I think uh, I believe uh, so. We we'll take info. Info, you can go ahead and uh, ask your question. Then from there, Richard, we respond. Info on me. So I've already asked the question. I've already, already asked, the, asked question. the question. So Rachel yes. can go on to respond. Okay. Yes. Don't. So, yeah. Explain. explain. Answer. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Are you ready for the responses? Yeah, we are ready. Okay. Yeah. I will start with the, the, the last question on how do I, do I address? It's like um, the, my whatever, my presentation is concentrated to the learners with intellectual disabilities. And uh, my learners in, with special disabilities are in the state-based pathway. They are not. They are not in the same classes with those with without disabilities. Uh, learners with intellectual disabilities learn. Uh, they are in a level or in. They they are offered curriculum that is called state-based curriculum, and the learners without disabilities are offered curriculum in the regular age based according to their age so these curriculums are two different things because this uh this one for learners with intellectual disabilities has been adapted it is not the same like, same as that one for learners who, who are in the age based curriculum sawa sawa hello yeah, hi, hi. Uh, am I yeah. talking to somebody? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 Richard. So learners with disabilities are placed in the same class, uh, in the 
like learners with intellectual disability, autism, deaf, blind, severe cerebral palsy are in their own category. They are placed in the state based pathway curriculum. But the learners who are blind, those who are uh, with uh, hearing impairment, those ones, they are integrated with those ones in the age based. Those, the, the blind, the low vision, the, the learners with physical uh, impairment, and the learners with those other disabilities, because they are, they are whatever, the content of what is to be taught is adapted so that they learn together. But learners with intellectual disability, autism, cerebral palsy, severe cerebral palsy, deaf brain, those with multiple disability, they have their own curriculum and they are assessed differently from those in the age-based uh, uh, curriculum. Sawa, sawa? Okay. Can, yeah, can, yeah. Can, can I chip in? Uh, I don't think I don't think uh, 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 you followed my question. So the, my question yeah. was, how do yeah. you implement CBC on learners without intellectual disabilities? The, 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 the examples that I've seen on the presentation are more cons uh, the, the focus was more on the learners with uh, uh, intellectual disability. So my question was, how are you implementing or what are the challenges or the successes that you see on implementing the CBC on learners who do not have intellectual disabilities? Thank you. Okay. Maybe Mfo, I can answer that for Rachel. Okay. Rachel, okay. basically a specialist in yes. the, with the learners with intellectual disabilities what yeah. she's calling stage based she doesn't teach any learner who does not have the disabilities what she's calling the regular learners so her specialization is for those with intellectual disabilities so she she doesn't interact with the other ones yes no it's and, fine it's fine and, thank you and also and also what what uh, checklist do you uh, you use when you're assessing them Somebody asked a question uh, about that. What do you include in your checklist when assessing students? Okay, like now, uh, let me use a skill like toileting. Uh, I am using observational checklist. I, I am going to look at the whole process, the steps that I want the learner to acquire toileting skill. Sawa, sawa. I am going to look at the learner, uh, at all the steps that the learner is going to, uh, to, to is supposed to, to do what? The, the learner is supposed to develop some uh, activities or to show what? The learner is supposed to, give, now what is this word? Portray some skills. The learner is supposed to portray, if it's toileting. Does the learner know when to know when to say that he is to toilet? If it is the one who is guided up to the toilet, does he know or does she know how to remove the 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 the, the, the pants or the the shorts, buttoning, bedding, using the toilet bowl? Hello. Uh, baby, anyway. using yes, the toilet yes, appropriately. Yes. yes. Yes, we are getting it. Uh, using the tissue, putting back the, the, the shot or the pant, buttoning it. And then after that, even the washing of the hands. That's the process. You All know? right, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Rachel. I hope that yes. uh, uh, we have really listen though somebody was asking you what is sour sour means so before you go you tell what does that mean sour sour <laughs> sour sour is yes. everything okay okay all right sour sour okay thank, thank you. you thank you thank you so much Richard. thank you so much i hope we are now we have understood so without much ado we uh we want to welcome the next speaker 
cell of bus. Hello. Yeah, hello. Hello. I I was the one who provided that question. Yes, the is in the house. Hello. Hello. Hello, Pass. Yes, I'm in the house. Yes, so solo pass. Can you hello. hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Um, there's someone asking a question, John. Uh, it's the, the, the person who was using the techno mobile. Uh, oh, she okay. has unmuted yeah. and she's asking a question. Do we have a minute uh, very quickly? Because okay. we do have to move on to Cleophas, but maybe very quickly she can give her question. What do you think, okay, John? So we, okay, yes. So somebody's asking to have, uh, Richard to explain yeah. how technology is integrated at the beginning of each lesson. How do you integrate technology at the beginning of every lesson? So, Rachel, I hope you are with us. Rachel? How I use tech? Yes, I'm there. Yeah. How, How do you integrate yeah, at the beginning of each lesson? Yeah. Okay. Let me give an example. I am teaching a kid in I could do a coding of papers. We are coding some papers. To develop, yeah, we are doing paper coding. So you, I, I have to first of all before uh, I have to Google and uh, all, all use the paper. I have to use ICT to let my learners see what that is, what how it is done. And what are uh, from the paper coding, what is achieved? So it has to be done at the beginning so that the learners can have a mental picture of what they are expected to do or, or to get a mental uh, picture of the skill they are supposed to uh, acquire. And from there, you then help them. Uh, or give them the opportunity to utilize whatever they have seen uh, together as you, you work uh, down, uh, as you work together with them, help them to come up with uh, whatever that they saw from the uh, ICT demonstrations. Hello? Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. Yeah, I was the one who was asking about the formative assessment, where we say we assess learners within the lesson because it's how we assess learners. So according to our curriculum, you are handling a lesson. So I was asking when you are using checklist, what is there on the checklist that the you include and then how do you determine that according to this checklist, the students have attained this skill, therefore has reached this. Um, I know it's through observation. When you observe, you have your own checklist. So how do you, on the same activity, on the same task that the students are doing in a classroom, so you are assessing them using observation checklist, how do you determine according to this, we have achieved what we want or not? Okay, now when I am, I, I, at least from the checklist, I'll, I'll have listed what I want the learner to uh, acquire. Yes, I'll have yes. listed the number of mm -hmm. skills or the, uh, that I want the learners to acquire. So in the process mm -hmm. of cutting out the skill, I'll mark uh, all, I'll award whatever the learner has I think mm. uh, has managed to present and for mm. the land uh, for the uh, the area that the learner has not managed then that mm -hmm. is how i'll look for a way next uh, during the, the now the revisiting of the same i get to help mm. the learner uh, uh, to, uh, to carry out 
whatever he has not been able to carry out. Mm -hmm. So the checklist uh, will have several uh, mm -hmm. uh, several activities that are listed. And for me, yeah. when I'm teaching or when I'm assessing, I'll be going through the steps or the, or the through the skills as I mark whatever has been achieved and uh, marking whatever has not been achieve so that I can look for ways and means of helping the learner to achieve whatever they have not achieved. Yes. Thank you so much. People, Thank, you so you much. Take it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, we go to Clopas. Clopas. Thank you. I hope each and everyone is hearing me. Can you, can, us, can, uh, can you just introduce yourself for me first? Yeah. And before you go ahead. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going yes, to I... trace yeah, the, the introduction which I already um, yeah. um, um, love us from my machine. Can I proceed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are getting you. Thank you, Clopas Wanamasinde. I'm a teacher and a teacher at the primary in Kenya. Hello? Yeah, hello. Yes, when we talk yeah. about CPC here in Kenya, uh, formerly it used to be 844, but now we turn it to 2663. That is whereby we we'll have the PP1, PP2, that is level one and level two. To be able to have six years in primary, six years in uh, high school, and uh, three years in university and in tertiary colleges. So that, is, that will be about the CBC. So my experience, can we able to move the slide? My experience in teaching CBC has enabled me to do very many things. First of all, uh, CBC is not all about competition, but it focuses on the ability of an individual learner and what a learner can be able to do. So this one has enabled for us to, for me to have a continuous At her or his level based. This uh, has enabled me also to help my students uh, uh, to capture the aspirations of the country, which has placed them in emphasis on competency, the character, patriotism, and even citizenship. So this makes Alana to be able to grow up all around. Uh, CBC has also uh, helped me, or the real experience I've gone through to be able to guide uh, the learner on competencies and the career choices. For example, a learner can be able to decide that I will be in future, I'll be a teacher, I'll be a doctor, and this is what CBC is all about. I will be able to see that also the CBC focuses uh, on the values, like for example, the respect, unity, and safety. And when you are teaching this particular learners, uh, you can't tell them that today I'm going to teach you about the safety or the respect. We always infuse it, I always infuse it in my lesson. For example, what has inspired me more about CBC, uh, being in a position to guide a learner to work out the same question uh, using different methods and be able to arrive at the same answer as a math teacher. And at the end of the lesson, you'll be able to hear the learner saying, Thank you, teacher, for your lesson. In this case, when, for example, I'm teaching a substrand, a substrand, let me the learning area in mathematics, I'm teaching about, uh, I'm teaching about uh, maths, I can be able to give my learners a project work whereby they can be able to make, uh, for example, I think we have lost uh, Clovis. You're not able to get him. Clovis? Clovis. 
I think his uh, his internet is um, yeah he has a problem uh, with the internet there's, yeah there's a problem with the internet connectivity kill mm -hmm. maybe, maybe in the interest of time John yeah we can move to the other one Filgona Awino the students and the learning outcome this will be able to give me a clear picture on what I'm going to deliver or the content to deliver to my learners. In the creation of the technology during implementation, in this case, I always use the PowerPoint and the learners can be able to play the games like Sudoku, uh, crossword, puzzle, and these are uh, arouses the interest of the learners. Uh, and this makes me to move with my learners from the beginning up to the end. in that particular lesson, I can be able, for example, project some of the diagrams on the board and ask my learners to be able to draw. I'll be able to move around and see how creative the learners can be able to draw uh, the same same diagram in a different way that have been projected on the board. And at the end of the day, for example, in the every week, I always give them a link so that they can be able to use the ICT tools like the smartphones, the tablets, the laptops that are provided. Hello. So I think uh, there's Clovis is still having problem with uh, is a connectivity. So can we uh, bring in the, the next teacher? Hello? Hello? Yes, the next Hello? teacher is Hello? Aweno. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hello, Nelly. Yes, Hello. I, I hope the presenters have presentations. I wish they shared it. So they that are, if, yeah. we are, yeah. if we are unable to hear them, we can yeah. see, we can read. Yeah, like yeah. Cleophas, eh? if we, ha we had the presentation, it would be better. Okay. Thank you. So is that, uh, I think, can we do that or do we just skip? We can go through the, the uh, uh, Marianne can go through the, the slides, just running them down as Filgona okay. prepares to come in. Okay. So Miriam, uh, okay. Phil Gona, are we know? I think it's time for Phil Gona. Yeah, Phil Gona, yeah. Yes, I'm here. Okay, so uh, just give your, introduce yourself to us because of, um, your name and the way I teach and the your yeah so all right yeah okay. eight minutes okay eight minutes yeah can I proceed now yeah yeah we can proceed okay thank you my name is Filgona Awino I am a teacher I'm teaching grade one at Kerwa Municipality Boarding Schools the school is located in Kirinyaga. Kerugoya town and in Kenya. Thank you. Next yeah, thank slide, you. please. Yeah. So what I admire most in CBC, CBC lessons are fun, enjoyable and interesting. As far as I'm concerned, in CBC is not a must you take a pen, and a pencil and you write down. As you can see in my first picture, we had learned about fruits we eat. So we had to draw and color, and now we drew and we were painting. At this point, we were painting about an orange. We must learn the color of an orange. Which color does an orange have? Yes, we must, we must know that. Lessons are practical, and these help learners to understand the concept better. 
Yes, it does under, learners understand better. Why am I saying this? When you learn something in class, then you go out and you do it practically, it does come out better and learners are able to understand the concept well, and that concept cannot get lost to be stick in their mind. With the many practical activities in CBC, learners can discover their talent and career lines at an early age. Yes, why am I saying this? You might do something for long and you do not have interest. At this, in CBC, learners understand their talent at a very early age. For example, we have an activity like in home science, we are doing cooking. And here, as you can see on my second picture up here, you can see learners trying to, they are displaying some bananas there. We want to cook some green bananas. What are we supposed to do? What are the processes of cooking these bananas? You see, they are able to learn, they are able to bring the concept together. When they go home, they don't even need to be told by their parents what to do. They only do it automatic. So as you can see, CBC is also fun. We don't need to sit in class all day, sitting, learning, writing. We also need to go out, whereby we have an outdoor activities. As you can see, my children there, they are sliding and they are enjoying it very much. So CBC is fun, enjoyable, and interesting. My next slide, please. How do we gather CBC learning materials? The school, in partnership with parents, provides textbooks used by learners. And I thank our parents very much because they cooperate on providing the, the textbooks. For our school, we have something called Book Fund. You pay it once, and for the next seven or eight years, your, your child will be provided with, with the textbook from all the way from pre-primary one to grade six or to class seven. I appreciate that and we get material from our parents and our school too. CBC requires learners and teachers to improvise and use locally available material. For example, we have used shopping bags which could have been thrown away in the dustbin. And we use them to make home science apron. As you can see, my learners in picture one and picture two, they are putting on apron. You might ask yourself, why is this apron having different prints? No, don't ask yourself questions. These apron are made from shopping bags. We have different supermarkets, for example, the Naivas. We have another one in our county, in our county here called Magunas. We have taken them, put them together and make an apron which looks very nice. As you can see, they look good, right? Thank you. To my next slide, please. So how do we integrate technology into CBC lesson? Yes, here technology comes again. As teachers, we must be equipped. We take learners to computer lab where they take ICT lessons okay. such as knowing the parts okay. of computer, familiarizing the it's computer a, application, yeah, like Microsoft Word. Yeah. As you can see in no, my online, yeah. If I'm, here, I'm, 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 I can't do it. Just give me 10 minutes. Uh, 10 minutes. As you can see in my fourth picture here, you can see learners in a computer lab with an assistant of a facilitator trying to show them on how to maneuver with these computers. Through this, they're able to gain knowledge and know how to use the computer. The school has also connected classroom with internet. That's allowing teachers to use the internet as a teaching resource. We are very lucky and I will really thank our school management because our school classes are installed with internet connection. So whenever I'm teaching something, I have my computer there. I can connect and show my learners what I want to show them. We also use projectors when we are viewing various video clips 
in various learning areas like CRE and even demonstrating science practical. As you can see on my first picture there, you can see learners viewing from a projector. On my second picture here also, we have learners viewing from a projector. And on my third picture here, learners are viewing from my projector. Some activities or some video clip, we watch them from the, from the computer lab. But when the learners are congested and there are many, we use the projector so that every learner will have equal opportunity to view whatever the teacher wants to see or to listen and to see whatever the teacher is teaching. Thank you. On to my next slide, please. Hello. Thank you. Learning Thank you. competencies. How do we learn through our competencies? We have different competencies, and I will talk about creativity and imagination. During music lessons, we are able to make drum shakers as music accompaniment. What do I mean by saying this? All music needs accompaniment. When you sing a plain music, it is not even sweet. But when you put some accompaniment, it comes out so nice. As you can see, there are learners who are learning how to play a piano here. And I can see another photo here. Maybe you can, let me check the next slide, please. Okay, sorry, I can't see that photo, but I have a photo of whereby learners have made their own drums and others have made their own shakers. I can't see it. Maybe you can just go back with it as we move on. Thank you. So in, as you can see, learners are able to learn about how to play, uh, how to play, a piano here by the help of our facilitators. Sorry, back again. To my previous slide, please. Thank you. Uh, hi, sorry. As I was planning uh, earlier, sure. when is this we are the right doing slide? music, we must have. Hi? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I think. You mean this one? Yes, I need this slide. Okay. I, I was talking about creativity and imagination, and I was explaining about my music lesson. During that lesson, learners were able to learn how to play a piano. Others were able to make drums. Others were able to make shakers as music accompaniment. And it was so nice. As you can see, new practical skills. All learners are creative in their own unique ways. CBC of explores creativity and exploit their innovative ability. All learners are created unique on their own way, and they have their unique abilities and they carry out activities in their unique way. Because not all learners are equal. Learners are able to do things or create their own things according to their ability, according to their creativity, according to their imagination. And that's why you see our learners creating very unique things. As you can see on my third photo, we have a learner who just made a boat. That boat, I just showed a picture. And out of that picture, I gave it as an assignment, as an activity. Go home with your help of your parents. Please come up with a nice boat. And that is what was brought to me. This was very nice and it was very exciting. New practical skills are also installed in learners, thus, as, thus building their competencies. Learners, they learn from one another. That's why we say learning to learn. 
Example includes how to use a popjembe in agriculture, how to play a piano, how to prepare food, and for science, and more. As you can see, the second school, learners are able to observe. As you can see on my second photos, learners are able to learn on how to hold a popjembe and how to use it. Through this, they can even come with their own way of holding it, in which you might think that this one is not possible. Why am I saying this? Because our learners are creative and they have great imagination. Thank you to my next slide, please. Communication and collaboration as a competency. In everything that we do, we must communicate. Even those learners who are deaf, they communicate through sign. Most CBC activities require teamwork among its learners. Learners have to ask for help from fellow learners and teachers when they are tasked with a different project. They thus learn how to express themselves and their communication skills and self-esteem improve with time. As you can see, my learners in these pictures, they are trying to communicate with one another on how to tackle those activities. Through communication, they are able to learn the tactics on how to tackle it, and they are able to learn even new language. They even, they even learn new words through the communication. So communication and collaboration is one of our best competencies. Next slide, please. Thank you. Self-efficacy. What do you mean by self-efficacy? Self-efficacy simply means believing in yourself, believing in what you can do. CBC task learners to produce desired outcome in some project. For example, learners may show how to house or any other item in the coursework. As you can see on my first photo, learners are able to create their own way of making a house. This house was drawn and they used some small magazine papers that were cut into small pieces with some colored manila papers. All learners were able to make their own house in their own different way, in their own creativity. And every learner believed that this house of mine is the best. This my house is the best of all. That's why you can see every learner on my second picture, they are proud. As you can see on my third picture, learners are holding offering basket made out of beads. This was wonderful because through showcase, we were able to sell some. Hello, and Ibona. Ibona. Time, time is not yes. on our side. Maybe you can wind up. Time is okay, up. Okay. You can wind up. Yes, yes. Yeah, we can run up and uh, uh, any, other, any questions. So, but we, we try to complete a flow fast presentation. And thank uh, you. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, just be ready. Any question from the participants? Any questions? We can get the questions later after the presentations, John. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Close yeah. first. Let's go to Cleopas. Yeah, try to round up. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah. So. My next slide, please. Sorry, John, are we? Oh, okay. So Philagona is going to finish. Close, close, okay. yeah, close fast, close fast, yeah. Close fast oh, oh, now. Oh, okay. Um, clue. Sorry, Philagona, yeah. the, the time is, has actually exceeded. Um, yeah. Could you, could we maybe uh, uh, go to Cleophas? If you have yeah, yeah. Uh, any time in the questions and answers, you can, you can explain a bit more, but the time has already exceeded. Yeah. On. Yes. I think I talked about the experiences. 
now I'm moving to development of learning activities and experiences for my learners. In this case, uh, let's probably turn to today. That's the learning area, the learning outcomes, the availability of the teaching and the learning needs. In this case, I'm teaching mathematics, that is in grade four. Whereby that will be my learning area. And the learning outcomes, we have two of them that is the general learning outcome and the specific learning outcome. My general learning outcome for apply measurement skills to find solutions to problems in a variety of the context of problems. And the specific learning outcome here, by the end of the substandard, the learner should be able to participate in shopping activities involving money practically. I'll be able to group my learners into four to six so that they can be able to role play shopping activities involving giving balance using real money. I'll have provided them the teaching and the learning aids in this case the coins and the notes in different denomination. When I move to formative assessment for uh, my learners, for my learner, in this case we have two, that is uh, summative and uh, formative assessment. The summative assessment, uh, this is where the assessment is done uh, at the end of a certain period, uh, for example, a year or eight years, uh, but in uh, Formative assessment, here we can be able to have classroom assessment. You assess each and every task as the learner be able to progress. So here you do let's prepare the assessment tools based on the land, strands, and the substrand. Here, for example, you can be able to give the uh, written test, question and answers, and observation. At the end of the day, I'll be able to give the immediate feedback to the learners verbally and written and also be able to give my feedback to the stakeholders, for example, the parents and the administration. Some of the challenges that I have faced in teaching CBC, there is an ability to acquire the teaching and learning resources on time, and this most of the time becomes a headache. We also have the point of connectivity, like the one I've been experiencing today while I was presenting and the first time, and also uh, poor infrastructures. We have been able to partner with a uh, uh, school uh, leadership. For example, in my future, you can be able to see uh, the one in the green shirt that is a natural representative who was giving us a talk on how we can be able to improve CBC in our schools. The administrators and teachers. Uh, who are in attendance to about the workshop so that we can be able to better more to improve on the CBC. We also have the CSOs always constantly with my school to be able to. Process that I needed during my lesson. Next slide. Young parents, as a class teacher of grade six, I have formed a WhatsApp group platform. I usually and regularly communicate with my parents. As you understand, the parents are one of the pillars for good results in maintaining the of the center meeting that we had with my parents. And at the end, we have also been discussing uh, with some of the individual stakeholders uh, and the selected parents uh, when any discrimination cases arise. So the parents are good uh, stakeholders in each and in the career so I need to succeed. Next slide. 
next slide. Yeah. About the teaching aids and the resources, mainly I do improvise the resources whereby some of them are collected by learners, both at school and at home. And I use of already purchased by the government and the school, for example. Cleopa, Cleopa okay. has, I'll but I think he's done with the with the presentation. We can yeah. go to the next, John. Yeah, okay, so, Marian, uh, project the next. Presenter. Yeah, the next, the next is uh, Joshua Koloa from Malawi. Joshua Koloa, I hope you are you are set. Please let's yeah. uh, make sure let's make sure we summarize our presentation as we will we'll have time when uh, they will ask questions where you can able to give more explanation. But let's be brief in our presentation and when it comes to answers to questions, we can uh, make an in-depth analysis as well. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes, it yes, is well. eight minutes. Observe yeah, eight, eight minutes, minutes, please. Yes, yes. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, my name is Joshua Koroa. Uh, a teacher at Ligun Boys Secondary School, and I'm teaching uh, agriculture. Um, I teach at all levels, but currently I'm teaching Form 3. So my presentation is based on the, uh, the competence-based curriculum, whereby in my subject, uh, students, are uh, doing some activities like the school garden, as well as pottery farming as part of uh, um, the activities that are supposed to be done in my subject. Next slide, please. Yeah, so what I like most about uh, the CBC is that First of all, it helps the learners to understand the literature which is being taught in class. So whenever we are teaching uh, uh, the students, normally they have somewhere to apply the knowledge. So it's either in the garden or we take them to the market where they can uh, experience or explore more of the ideas. So it's like a kind of interactive uh, lessons with my students. Secondary, it also stimulates the mind of uh, learners to discover more knowledge and skills. So whenever um, we are sharing notes with my, my students, it's, it's like it motivates them so that they find out more on what they can learn about from whatever I'm delivering in class, but they also try to find their own means of discovering new knowledge as well as skills. Next slide. Uh, on the major challenges um, in the teaching of uh, CBC, uh, here I find uh, time to be the major challenge because uh, these activities require um, more time uh, for the learners activities, as well as supervision, which is on my side. For example, uh, whenever we are to uh, conduct some of these activities, they are supposed to be done outside our normal timetable. And therefore it require learners to abandon some of the activities so that they attend to the activities in my subject. Apart from that, on my side, I'm also looking at the supervision part because we are also involved in other um, um, administrative issues. Uh, at times, we have to find time to go around to check whatever the students are doing so that we assist them uh, properly. Next slide. Um, Normally, uh, CBC activities are, are usually generated from the syllabus. 
uh, uh, for example, here in Malawi, or the way I do it at my school is that whenever I'm, I'm to have the activities with my students, I make sure that I generate them from the syllabus uh, so that they also assist the learners during their exam. And the materials that we use for the activities are usually uh, locally found. Um, if we can, uh, sorry that I didn't provide much of the photos here, but we have more photos whereby students are making organic manure so that they can uh, supply in the vegetables that you, you saw in the first slide. And those um, vegetables are grown organically. So there is no application of inorganic uh, fertilizers. Uh, on, on the part of assessment, uh, normally we don't, uh, we are not assessing these activities on the ground, but we base on the, um, the, the assessments that are to be done in class, like uh, exercises as well as uh, midterm tests. Next slide. Yeah, so learners here are also using the internet as a way of integrating uh, the CBC activities with technology. So we task our students to go on YouTube so that they see what other, uh, what other learners are doing in other countries. And we also help them to uh, do the same so that um, it helped them or it it should motivate them in doing uh, different activities at our school. And then learners are also asked to demonstrate uh, on how these technologies may be used. So in our school, we have so many activities that are being done by the students. Some of them are trying to look for the ways in which we can crush the manure so that they decompose faster. So all those technologies are learned from uh, through the, uh, the internet where students see how uh, their friends from other countries are doing it. So this marks the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua. The next presenter is uh, Eric Chipeta from Malawi too. Eric, are you there? Hello, Eric. Eric, are you there? Eric Chipeta from Malawi. Hi, Eric, can we hear you? Hello, Eric. I think Eric is not with us. Hi, Eric. Hello, Eric. Hello, I'm able to hear you. Okay, can you go on please with the presentation? Yes. Yes, please carry on. Hello. Hello, Hello should I start? You? Yes, yes, please start. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, maybe from the My... middle. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yes, my name is Eric Peter, a teacher at Chimbowe Community Day Sounder School, Kasungu District, that's Malawi. My presentation again is on a competency out based curriculum. Next slide, please. Power powerful or inspiring learning moments my students have had. The first one, when learners build knowledge from their previous experience. In this statement, what we're looking at is in any lesson, students should, they already have, so before we start new knowledge, we ask them, to tell us what they know. And from there is when we build to 
add now the new information which we are supposed to teach. In that way, we are trying to build knowledge so that that knowledge becomes clear and more definite. Another inspiring learning moments my students have had, when learners predict on the outcome of the experiment before carrying out the experiment. In here, as a science teacher, what we do is after writing the experiment that is to be carried, we ask learners so that they have to predict what will be the outcome. Now that prediction will help us or will support the development which will come along. They will have a focus on what they will find at the end. Number three, another inspire, inspiring learning moment my students have had. When all learners are mentally, that is minds on and physically, hands on involved in the lesson throughout. This is inspiring in the students just because their focus is on what they are doing. For example, if an experiment is on connecting, let us say the cells, as they are very busy connecting the cells, their mind will be on the cells to see what will be the result at the end. Another inspiring moment, when the teaching and learning materials used bring out the desired and intended outcome of the activities in the lesson. Now, in the lesson, we know we have the intended outcome. And as the process of teaching and learning is going on, now, if those desired uh, or intended outcome are being taught in due course, and the activities are related to the outcome. In that way, students are very busy and they are inspired. As a teacher too, we are also inspired in that way. Number four, five, number five, when the teaching and learning materials allows interest of learners. Now these teaching and learning materials, as they allows interest of learners, the aim is the lesson becomes interesting. In that way, learners are eager to learn more, to say what will be the outcome at the end. In that way, learners are aroused and also knowledge is gained. At the same time, achievement of supporting learning also takes place. Next slide, please. How do teachers gather teaching and learning resources to conduct outcome-based lesson and activities? Now, if you look at that picture, you find that students are asked to collect from the school environment, the trading center, or even their homes. Now, if you look at them, you see that they are very much eager in getting them because they know that they will use them in the class as they're collecting those uh, teaching and learning materials which can be used. In that case, sometimes they can be collecting materials like uh, uh, this. Skeleton, like the like, uh, class. We can have a total shell. At, at one time, these materials will be used in the class. The next slide. Next slide. Also materials can be improvised by teachers. We improvise those materials that we do not have. For example, we may have, well, let us talk of a cell, a plant cell or an animal cell. This can be improvised by having maybe a stone and that stone and then you have maybe a plastic paper and the plastic paper you fill in with water then a stone so in that way, that one is acting like a, uh, an animal cell whereby there is, no, there is no cover outside. Now for a plant cell, which is now rigid, you find that we put that, uh, that, that thing that we've made into a cardon, which is now rigid, which is now giving a definite shape. So that one can be improvised 
to make sure that uh, during the time that it can be used, we can use that one, which has been improvised by the teachers. Also, these materials can be borrowed from neighboring schools within the zone. We know our schools are divided in zones, as well as clusters, even districts. For example, at a school, maybe you may not have a, a computer, you may not have a microscope, but a neighboring school has that one. So you can go to that school, you borrow that one so that you can use it. In that way, we are having those materials available at our school. These materials can also be provided by the school administration. Materials may be, we have the chart papers, can be provided by the school. We also need maybe some boxes of chalk and the many others. All these can be provided by the school administration. Now, some materials are provided by the government through the ministry. We have textbooks which are provided to our schools. We have some charts uh, of different subjects representing the book. So those charts are in those uh, chart papers and these are provided by the government so that they can be used when they are needed. Next slide, please. This marks the end of my, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sikumu. Thank you so much for this brief uh, uh, presentation. Thank you so much. I hope that we are putting our, question, our questions aside. So after which we can be able to have some responses from the presenters. So do we have any other presenter? Uh, thank you, John. I think we can have Filgona who can finalize. But at the beginning, time is up. It's already yeah. past 30 minutes. So, Filgona, I hope you'll understand that time is up. It's okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, slide number eight, please. Number eight. Slide number eight. Yes. Limitation of CBC. Okay, yeah. Yeah, there we are. Thank you. So on limitation of CBC, I would like to say some parents do not appreciate parental involvement in CBC. This is because they are very busy at work. They come home late. Therefore, they can't help the learner to tackle the activities. Another limitation is inadequate human resource. Not all teachers know how to operate a computer. Therefore, when it comes to activities involving watching video clips, they are not very much conversant with it. Again, we have this programming learning in computer studies, whereby we have technical places where teachers have not been trained. For example, how to code. Teachers does not know how to code. Thank you. On to my next slide, please. And I would like to conclude by saying that Kenyan children are blessed to have CBC. CBC is a gift for a Kenyan child and is timely when country is struggling with unfaithful and fulfilling job marketing. This is whereby there are no jobs for these youth, whereby you find that there are a lot of idlers around. CBC trains learners to be critical thinkers who can create jobs on their own and for others. However, there are a few challenges with curriculum that government should look into and provide solution while embracing it. I love CBC. I love teaching very much. And I love you. my work. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you so much. You have been so you have been very superb presentation. So we thank for all the presenters, and uh, there is no time. Time here, yeah, time is just our favor. So now we want to take some uh, questions and uh, where the presenter will uh, respond. Just a few minutes and uh, before we go to a close. Before we go to the reflection question, if there's any question to present, you thank can you so uh, much. thank you. We can do thank that. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, John, for the session. I think we have a few reflection questions that are there. Thank you, okay. teachers, even for your time to present. I know you have had challenges, especially in connectivity, and we are very sorry for that. 
but you have really made it possible to share your experiences and we are very very grateful because we have learned quite a lot from you especially as you implement cbc so some of the reflection questions and participants can ask especially the teachers that are presented uh, what have you learned uh, today about the unique role and responsibilities of teachers in development and implementation of cbc and uh, how have these teachers uh, insights today shed light on the successes and challenges in the implementation of cbc at the classroom level are we able to tease out those kind of successes and those kind of challenges from the different presenters and then what lessons from today relate to our own country wherever we are coming from are there lessons that relate uh, to uh, what has been presented today so anybody is ready to go on Philomena I can see you're ready to go yes good afternoon and thank you for giving me the floor mm. um thank you so much um teachers for that one those wonderful presentations um we are so inspired especially to uh, Phil Gona who said um, the Kenyan children are very um, uh, lucky to have CVC. I hope by the time the Gambia also pilots the CVC, our kids will be lucky like the Kenyans. Um, I have a question to Joshua. Joshua, in your presentation, you've made mention that time is a challenge for you. Um, to the extent of children sometimes missing lessons for other subjects just to attend to your activities. Now, do you create or does the school create a mecha mechanism where these um, kids recover their lost time for other subjects so that they can also catch up with what they have lost um, 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 during learning in those subject areas? Thank you. Yes, Joshua, you can respond if you're there with us. Yeah, I'm here. Um... Yes, just want to respond to the question. Uh, thank you very much, men, uh, for the question. Uh, first of all, let me make it clear that I didn't say that uh, the students miss lessons, but then according to our program, uh, normally norm, uh, normal classes ends at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And then from 3 o'clock up to half past 4, there are some activities which uh, students are supposed to do. Now you can see okay. that with the number of subjects that are taught here, uh, we mm -hmm. are like in competition uh, to grab the learners. One teacher take them to the lab, another teacher take them to the garden. So there's that kind of uh, conflict. Of course, not mm -hmm. a conflict that uh, we can fight, but normally time is limited. So that's what I wanted to say on that one. I hope I'm answering oh. your question. Thank yeah, you. thank you. It's thank clear. You. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, there is another hand by Techno Mobile. I don't know who's that. Unmute, please, and talk. Unmute. And please make your uh, questions or your observation very brief because of time. The one on Techno Mobile, please unmute. My yes. Marwadi. Yes, yes. Are you able to hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please be very brief. Yeah, yeah I'll be brief. Mine is just a concern when somewhere another presenter talked about the lack of parental support. Uh, it was presented by one of the presenters on, on, on if at all we are getting support on implementation of CBC. So I want to agree with that presenter. It is because the only reflection, question number three, it says, does it relate to your own country? Mm -hmm. Part of the area we have where I, for example, where I come from, it's really true. Some parents, they are looking for greener pastures. They migrated to maybe South Africa, to other countries. So students are living alone. So it's really true that we have students that can, that really we like that uh, parental support to implement this one. We need parents, but they're not available. Students are on their own. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. Frank, your hand is on. I can see you're relaxing with what uh, one of the presenters talked about. That is Silgona from Kenya. Yes, Frank Kazembe, your hand is on. Uh, uh, thank, yes. thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, colleagues. Thank you. Uh, Good my afternoon. name is Frank Kazembe. I would like to uh, concur 
with the what has been presented. I thank all the presenters. They have given us a good job, though I've missed part, a good part of it due to internet connectivity. But then I've got please some, mute, some of uh, the techno, techno mobile, please mute. Yeah, my uh, I, I want to, to, to reflect on you. What lessons from today to your own, uh, to your own country? I remember when I presented my, uh, my presentation last week uh, on the challenges of CBC. One of the challenges was that it is a challenge to implement this uh, curriculum, uh, especially where inclusive education is uh, involved. T today, to me, it's like a testimony from my, uh, my, my, my Kenyan counterpart, but who say that uh, they, they have some sort of a parallel curricula for those uh, SNEs who have mental uh, disabilities. You can see it's a real challenge. So as much as the, uh, the CBC is a good curriculum, but then inclusive education becomes a challenge. So that's what I wanted to say, but I've enjoyed okay. the presentation. Thank you so okay. much. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Frank, even for being able to identify with uh, what we are is being done in other countries. Thank you, thank you for that insight. Mpo, your hand is up. Mpo, thank, thank, yes. you, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being given this opportunity. I also like to thank all the presenters. It was a very good presentation. Um, what I've learned is that uh, we normally say that uh, education is a, a three-legged pot, if that is correct. We have a learner, a, a parent, and a teacher. So I think I uh, uh, throughout the presentation, I've realized that all uh, 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 three, uh, uh, where the teacher, the learner, and the students are, and the, the teacher, the learner, and the parents needs to be involved uh, for the success of the CBC that uh, has cut across all the presentation. However, I've also realized that there was one presentation or some presentation whereby it's like, then has to be integrated integration between CBC and what and ICT. So in my country, I think it is going to be more uh, effective and productive in the urban areas because in areas whereby they 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 can have ex access to connectivity, that one is going to be challenged. Uh, another one is that it, it it seems like it needs more uh, labor or human resource. So it's going to be very effective and productive, whereby there are a lot of kind of teachers and, and the parents are more involved. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing. I think at this time, uh, let's just wait for a group photo. Please don't leave. But I want to invite uh, uh, Marianne to just wrap up the session and inform us of the next steps so that we can see what we need to talk about in the next uh, meetings because our time is up. So uh, please just remain there. Do not leave as Marianne wraps up the session. Thank you so much for being with us. And thank you so much for availing yourselves uh, for the meeting. For the teachers, thank you for the awesome job that you've done in a, uh, sharing your experiences in CBC. We really long for this and we, it has happened. So we are very, very grateful. Over to you, Marianne. Thank you, Nelly. If I could ask everyone to turn on their cameras for a moment. Let's take a group photo. Then we'll move into talking about next steps for our next meeting. So please turn your cameras on. Eric, if you can turn your camera on. Um, Christine, okay. Frank, Mapo, Monaisha, Juma, a few people will take a picture. I realize we've lost a lot of people. We had um, close to 30 people, I think, at one point, and now we've we've gone a bit yeah. over time. Okay. One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. All right. So colleagues, uh, let's give a round of applause for all the teachers while we have our cameras on. Wonderful, wonderful job, wonderful presentations. It's really a pleasure to listen to you all. 
So we've heard from five teachers today and four teachers last week. I think by now the members in our group who are coming from ministries and governments and uh, local education groups and civil society organizations, you should have a lot of ripe fruit and evidence about what CBC implementation looks like in the classroom level now. Of course, these were stellar teachers who came to present, ones who were recommended uh, because of their excellent performance. But uh, so it's not exactly some type of a, uh, you know, a study in that sense of how it's like everywhere, but we're seeing from these excellent teachers what it can look like and what possibilities exist. So this is really some of the best work that we're seeing at the country level in these uh, three countries who we've heard from this week and last week. So we have to ask ourselves, go back to Nima's question that she asked us last week. Will CBC just be some fad, some trend, or will it be a lasting system? Something that lasts, that we continue to improve and implement and strengthen? Or is it just some fad that will come and go? I wanna ask everybody that question. Teachers who are still here, uh, members of the community of practice, what do you think? Let's go back to Nima's question. Nima was a teacher from Tanzania last time who presented. Will CBC be some fad, some trend, or will is it here to last, in your opinion? What do you think? Yeah, I think, um, Marian, if I could just make a contribution. I think with all what we have uh, learned from these teachers and how we see the people's engagement and how they are fastly and uh, acquiring knowledge, practical knowledge, I think the, the best way to go is the CBC. But it takes uh, all of us in our various places, in our work and organizations to, to make sure that people believe that CBC is the way to go. Though we are seeing a lot of, they are sharing a lot of uh, challenges, all of us, which we know, but I think uh, with this kind of community practice and uh, with the support from our government and the community, because we cannot leave the community behind. If we want to really, uh, like what somebody was presenting, wherein we, we talk about bringing local materials. And uh, sometimes those the parents know that uh, my kids will come for ask for a, an empty tin of a uh, tomato paste. Uh, a, those kind of things they can use to school. They can even try to gather them in the community. So the, the way for the way is like as once we have uh, identified those problems, it's high time for all of us to be able to develop and uh, something like an action plan, an action plan which we can, we can present to our uh, colleagues or we can present to our uh, administrators, policy, those are in the policy, we can present them based on their different countries. And, we, and so that uh, we tell them that this is the challenges, these are the exams and evidences we have got from different teachers from different countries. And then from there, as uh, we can able to plan for a way forward. If there is also a need for us to bring uh, uh, those policy makers also, to show that uh, we are in the, the teachers, the curriculum implementers, and those policy at that kind of level, they can share their experience where they can get what they can get from the uh, from the implementers. They can know that this is what really is happening in the classroom, and this is support that uh, we need to give as government or as a policy. John, I think your connection is weak. I think you're frozen. Does anybody want to come in where John left off? He had some great points. Who wants to pick it up from there? The question that we're addressing is how can, how will CBC move from just being some trend and some fad to uh, being something that stays, that's permanent, that is the way that we, we do things? I think from the, Marianne, I can, from there. I think uh, what was very clear when the teachers were presenting is that 
there is need for collaboration among other stakeholders so that they get support in terms of especially resources, use of technology, and uh, also in terms of assessment. Uh, the other challenge is about uh, creating awareness, especially to parents to be able to support uh, CBC because that was also mentioned by several teachers being a critical kind of challenge. So that is very key and even resourcing because making resources and you can see from what the teachers have done, it has not been very, very easy. So I'd also wish that some of these teachers like the ones that have presented are able to share even within their areas where they're coming from with other teachers on how to make it practical in terms of implementing CBC. They've come with good ideas where they are innovative, like the one that, um, is it Filgona who presented on the use of uh, uh, um, uh, some kind of uh, uh, used bags, carrier bags to make aprons. That, that is creativity where a teacher goes out of their way and uh, see whether they can be able to do anything from the available materials that are there without necessarily incurring any cost. So I think for the teachers, you can continue sharing this even to the other teachers so that again, the formation and change of attitude will be very easy, especially when it's coming from you, the implementers of the curriculum. So thank you so much, over to Marian. Okay, can I chip in? Yeah, of course, it's an open discussion. Yes, um, also just a follow-up also to add on what they have already said that I like the fact that um, this CBC is using uh, locally available uh, uh, resources. Uh, that means that we can see to each that uh, every every country uh, is like recycling, recycling everything that we see so that across all the subjects in science, in agriculture, in Sesotho, the, the, the learners can use uh, like the grass to make the, the heads, they can use the grass to make the meds, everything that they see around. I think the, the CBC is going to make the learners aware that everything is resourceful. It's unlike when they are just in class and then they are expected to pass. So they can also be involved and make uh, different projects within uh, the, the different countries whereby learners can have the fairs, like, like, like in my country, we, we have the science fairs, the agric fairs, whereby learners can have uh, the fairs using these locally available resources and recycling them in the process of learning. So also, I also like the fact that I'm just here in Lesotho and I have shared, uh, you have shared with uh, us uh, the different experiences from different teachers. This calls that for, for us that every country that is the member here can have the representative of teachers and then we can capacitate uh, teachers and sensitize them as well as the parents. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much. Maybe just to follow up uh, on what my colleagues are saying, it's true, CBC is a very collaborative curriculum and uh, we have seen the different stakeholders, the teachers, the parents, even the community governments. I think there should be you know, concerted effort to try and uh, make sure that uh, this curriculum works because we are now focusing on skills. Like we have seen our teachers display. It is the learners you know, bringing out their creativity, their full potential, other than just uh, you know, putting knowledge and then, and then they reproduce it. So I believe if it is supported uh, from all angles, it is something that is uh, worth investing in because we are focusing on competencies. I look at, uh, at a country like Kenya, uh, at the TVET level, CBET, which is uh, competency-based education and training, works out so well. So I, I believe it can do so even at the basic education level if all you know, resources and support is put, particularly at the school level for both the teacher and also the parents. I see a lot of uh, disparities, particularly between teachers that are teaching in a public and private institutions. The, the, the ones in the public, there seems to be quite some challenges because of issues of support and the resources that are put 
to help these uh, teachers, uh, help learners uh, acquire some of these uh, core competencies. So I still believe with a lot of support, CBC uh, may not be a fad. It's something that is good to take up. Uh, thank you. Can I add something? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, do uh, go add what others have said about whether CBCC is going to be achieved or not. As for me, I am suggesting uh, three steps. First, the one that has been said that there must be sensitization among all stakeholders about CBCCs in schools. After that, and there are supposed to be uh, teacher training, maybe a, a CBD for teachers, those who are going to implement this CB, this uh, competency-based curriculum. After the teachers have been oriented and trained, and then there is a need, this one is so important to me, there is need for teachers to be intrinsically motivated. Because if people look for extreme motivation, it doesn't work. But we need intrinsic motivation for teachers. It should come from within the teacher. So it will begin with that teacher, because if that teacher is intrinsically motivated, we will not find problems finding time to prepare for these lessons. The teacher who is intrinsically motivated has a goal to achieve. That means that teacher will not have problems to create time and improvise those resources. That teacher, if he's intrinsically motivated, will be able to do anything because he has got a target and a goal to achieve. If they create goals, teachers, by the end of the day, you find out that this is uh, this is uh, competency-based or outcome-based curriculum has been achieved. And for me, it's possible. It begins with one teacher who is intrinsically motivated. It will work, and then any support from all other stakeholders. Thank you so much. Wonderful. And does anyone else want to jump in and comment on uh, any of these reflection questions or Nima's question about whether CBC will be a fad or whether it will be here to stay? Yes. Last chance. Can I yes, add Obona. something? Hmm. Uh, I'd like to add something about parents. If parents take this CBC positively, it's going to hmm. work. Because as I yes. can see, most of the negative parts come from our parents whereby they are yes. not accepted that they in CBC. They find that CBC has a lot of work, therefore they should not be engaged. Our parents should take CBC positive and embrace it so that we can be able to bring up our children, our young ones, very powerful, very creative and very innovative. I would also like to urge the government to support CBC fully, both in private school and public school, because when most help come, comes on the side of public school, whereby that you find that the private school are left behind. Even when there's this CBC training, they only call public school teachers. As as private, we are only invited aside, which is not very good. Not keeping in mind that these private teachers are the same, same teachers who are applying to the government so that they can be absorbed in the years to come. Instead of making their time well and to educate these teachers and keep in mind that they are also young and energetic therefore they need education so that we can be able to embrace this cbc cbc is very nice cbc is very good i like cbc we should embrace cbc all of us as a community as a country as a whole world thank you those are excellent ending thoughts well said um, I think that's a good spot to end on. So thank you, teachers. We, we are so appreciative of you, of you giving up your time. We know it's a school night. <laughs> you have to teach in the morning. And uh, unless there's a holiday tomorrow, uh, we know that it's, it's uh, getting to be an evening, a late evening for you. So we'll let you go. But we thank you so much for coming and sharing your uh, experiences and your passion and your commitment. This is a professional learning community. You're welcome to join as guests. Um, this community is led by uh, primarily government actors and actors from uh, some members from academia and civil society organizations. 
uh, and they will be talking uh, in, uh, at a future date about their next steps. We need to uh, come back and decide our next meeting date uh, uh, in a few days. So we'll be in touch with everybody over email and on WhatsApp. So thank you again, teachers. And if you'd like to join our WhatsApp group, um, we can send you the link to join the group. Um, thank you very much for coming. We've had a rich discussion and uh, we hope that you'll join us for an ongoing discussion about implementation of CBC. Your voices are important and uh, you are the frontline implementers. You are the, the, the people who educate the country and no other profession is possible without the work of a teacher. So we thank you and we wish you a, a good evening. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. So Thanks for joining. Big day today. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.